But this is the, the current big talking point in the Irish wind industry, and I personally think it's probably the most exciting thing to happen in the last 10 years. I mean, up to now, we've produced wind locally, we've put it on the Irish grid, and we've used it for Irish purposes. The UK government has come along, and they have identified that they have a chronic energy shortage over the next 50 to 75 years. And the UK government, while it's very uh, taking a great position in developing its own offshore and onshore wind and solar capabilities, that will not be enough to meet its needs. And the UK government has said, we will buy your, your wind power that you produce here in Ireland. And that is a double opportunity for Ireland because it is what the Irish offshore wind in industry needed to give it a kickstart because now it has a market and a, a very valuable market for its output. But equally, we see no reason, even though it's going to be expensive to build, why the Irish onshore industry will equally benefit from this and be able to export onshore wind onto the UK market. I would point to three challenges in particular. Um, the, by far and away, the biggest one is the area of finance and the lack of finance available particularly for what I would call development projects before they're operating. Once projects are operating, I can, you know, and many others have no difficulty finding buyers because what you've got is you've got a, a 15, 20, 25 year cash flow that's pretty much, you know, as safe a cash flow as you'll get these days. But to get people to put risk capital at work in, in global renewables is quite difficult. And to get banks to finance these projects at competitive rates is quite challenging. And that is actually one of the biggest barriers to the continued growth of the renewable industry. Now, in my profession, my job is to find ways around that. And we have to keep coming up with new innovative financial products to tap into the wealth that is out there and try and match potential investors with the interesting projects. So that's, that's one area. Uh, the second area is the whole area of, of grid infrastructure. And in a lot of countries around the world, uh, grids were not built for the upsurge in renewable uh, production and it's an issue here in Ireland, it's an issue in parts of the UK, it is definitely an issue in the US and that requires massive investment from governments and hopefully maybe involving private enterprise as well um, in up, up, upgrading our grid infrastructure. The third challenge has been what I would call the ability of governments to change the tariff or their pricing support mechanism. And there's been a number of examples of this in recent years, such as in the UK and in Spain, in particular on, on the solar side, that has disconcerted investors, so much so that these investors have said, you know, if we can't trust governments, to you know, continue with their pricing support, why should we invest our capital in the first place? However, I wouldn't want to paint a picture of doom and gloom because while there are challenges you know, with any new industry, there's always going to be challenges. And there are a lot of things changing in favor of the industry as well. The need for renewable sources of power isn't going away. If anything, it's getting more pronounced despite the prominence of other sources such as shale gas. But more importantly, the cost of renewable production is falling. And to give you one example, solar photovoltaic modules, which is the primary piece of equipment used for solar production, the cost of that has come down by about two thirds in the last five years. That's quite a dramatic cost decrease. And while tariffs that governments are paying are falling, technology is falling equally as fast. And that is a powerful incentive for this industry. There's a real entrepreneurship spirit in Ireland where we want to get up and do things. And we're not just trying to solve Irish problems. We believe that we have the resources, the people and the capabilities to solve global problems. And this actually is a classic example where we have established something called the Green IFSC, which is modelled on the original IFSC, which again was established in 1987 at a time of severe economic hardship in this country and became a world leading centre for international finance. We see the green IFSC as replicating this in the green sustainability areas. And without getting into a lot of detail on it, what this concept is all about is about making sure that Ireland becomes the centre of excellence in the whole area of green finance. And let me give you two examples of how I think that will happen. 
Um, we see people here as part of our group in the Green IFSC and KPMG are huge supporters of this, of this initiative and are, have partaken in it from the outset. We see ourselves as helping to develop innovative financial products and which will help to bring new finance into the industry. And I'll give you one example. We're looking at the concept of using covered bonds, which is a well-known financing product in the real estate market. We think that could easily be replicated into the, into the green industry. Secondly, Ireland, along with Luxembourg, is the pre predominant funds location globally at this stage. It's onshore, it's well regulated, and all of the support infrastructure is, sits here in, in Ireland. Investors around the world, rather than investing directly into projects, are coming together in clean tech, sustainability and renewable funds. And we think Ireland is an incredibly attractive location of choice for these funds. It doesn't have to have all of the different aspects of running the funds, but certainly we have the capability to actually manage these funds here. We can domicile these funds and we can provide a lot of the support services. And that is one of the key planks of the Green IFSC. Mm -hmm.